Welcome to TRS Clips, India's fastest learning portal. Make sure you subscribe, make sure you hit that bell icon. Why don't we break it down a little more? What does oxytocin do for a human being, right? Then let's go back all the way. Let's look at sex hormones, right? So there are four main sex hormones to talk about. One is estrogen, progesterone, testosterone, and oxytocin. And there's a fifth one called vasopressin. Mm. Let's break it even further. Let's go mm. even further back. Mm. When you say sex, first thing that needs to happen when you have sex is that you should have libido. So, what do you think libido is? When you hear the word libido, what comes to your mind? Horniness. Yeah, that's not exactly it. Libido is the ability and the the mental ability to have sex. So, if suppose somebody attractive comes to you. are you even capable of being turned on libido is not equals turned on that is different that is the next step libido is the capacity to be turned on mm. and that is the first thing that needs to happen so if you have libido then when you find someone attractive you will get turned on and then sex will happen i'm assuming that this libido possibility mm-hmm. is an outcome of your hormones being in place correct okay exactly so that's how these two things tie up together so when your hormones are in place these hormones which is estrogen progesterone testosterone these are the hormones that decide if that have a huge impact on libido these are sex hormones this is baseline all animals have this the sex hormones are released from your adrenal gland which is um, you've heard of kidneys right on top of the kidneys are your adrenal glands from your adrenal glands comes the sex hormone now i want you to think about sex as this evolving phenomenon that goes up your body so the lower down something is happening the more primitive it is so the sex organs are between your legs lower down the sex hormones are coming from your adrenals lower down so this is very very primitive and as you keep growing up the level of control that your brain has on sex will keep on increasing so your brain has no control over sex hormones but your brain has control over your actions so we will get to that okay right so libido is what sex starts as once you get turned on and i don't want this to be a very uh, like a lecture though no, like no, sure. I, yeah so it's so uh, i'll talk keep... about my first masturbation yeah. story in a minute <laughs> no I'm, i'm done with that phase <laughs> i'm done yeah what that was phase. that like <laughs> <laughs> oh every do you think every boy remembers their first masturbation Yes, you know why? Because your friends make you feel guilty about it. <laughs> you know, you remember this phase <laughs> where you think that you've done something wrong. कि क्या कर रहा हूँ मैं life के साथ? That starts happening. They either get, they either feel guilty or they get terrified. Yeah, I've had like I've heard stories of uh, boys who thought that they killed their junk. Like it's it, that's it, it's over. <laughs> like they have no clue what just happened. <laughs> Yeah, very strange fucking <laughs> phase. Because nobody tells you this stuff, right? You most boys will just discover it accidentally. You want to cross a line? <laughs> Go for it. <laughs> When you saw your cum for the first time, what did you think? <laughs> I got damn confused. <laughs> That what the hell is this? I didn't know my body had this I mean, inside it. <laughs> it's not blood. It's not pee. <laughs> yeah, I thought something tore inside me, bro. <laughs> no, it's some random tissue. <laughs> <laughs> it is in yeah, some ways we yeah we really need sex education in this country yeah. because uh, yeah, literally every boy is finding this out on them by themselves yeah. mm, i'm sure like girls who have their first periods without having anybody warn them about it would also be equally terrified more more because, because you blood. know what blood is correct so these are things that teenagers should be prepared for and mm. who is going to t- tell them Mm. um but yeah first first masturbation is a crazy <laughs> crazy experience and then the next day in school <laughs> and then figuring out acha kisko puchu <laughs> or or finding your crew you know find, finding the ones who already done it <laughs> yeah and then you tell them and then there is this moment like oh you too huh? okay <laughs> you feel a brotherhood then <laughs> and then try convincing the fourth guy to do it and join the brother one <laughs> oh man boys groups are just messed up dude <laughs> i miss i miss uh, my boy group at this point but what i miss more is libido talk <laughs> right. coming coming back so uh with uh, that is where libido starts okay 
So libido starts at a point where your uh, sex hormones are just spiking. Mm. So testosterone has a very huge role to play in both men and women. Really? Yeah. Okay. So women with very very low testosterone levels which so the normal level of testosterone in women is different obviously than men but for them if there is less testosterone then their libido is affected mm. right so the whole concept and this is uh, for me this is very fascinating because i did a, you know there's pride month going on and uh, the whole discussion on men and women and how it's all different it's a beautiful spectrum men have estrogen progesterone testosterone women have estrogen progesterone testosterone but then the ratios are different the uh, site of actions are different but that's it it's not complete opposites there are so many similarities there are in fact more similarities than there are differences so the way you get turned on the effect of an orgasm all of that is the same um but yeah i thought uh, when we talk of libido uh, the when sex hormones rise that's when libido starts so now it's like putting a open for business mm. sign on the door mm. that's your body is conveying that yes it's ready for sex mm. so what is oxytocin still after all this oxytocin is initially when we first found out about oxytocin in 50 i think 90 years ago uh, we thought it was a hormone only for helping mothers deliver their child Okay so we found that when a mother was delivering oxytocin levels were spiking so people thought that oxytocin helps the uterus to press the baby out mm. right so for a long time oxytocin was only used at that point when a mother was struggling to deliver the baby you would give oxytocin to help the baby come out later on we found that oxytocin is also spiking during sex now why should that be and then later on it was found that oxytocin is also spiking when a group of boys are hugging each other <laughs> after a after winning a match for example mm. or for any random reason and then we find out that oxytocin is important overall for bonding mm. so when a mother hugs a child when a father hugs a child when friends hug each other when there is just bonding between teammates there is oxytocin I'm trying to visualize that one dude went and collected blood samples from a football team when they're celebrating. But the things people have done for science. <laughs> wow. But okay, cool. So it's you feel a bond with a certain person. Now, yeah. one thing I've realized after the countless conversations with you is that your hormonal system dictates the reality that you perceive. So if yeah. you think that you have a certain kind of personality of you like certain things, it's yeah. actually a hormones kind of being the puppet masters and making you feel a certain way. 100%. So you know there is this uh, dismissive thing that some people say, "Oh, are you being hormonal?" Mm. Bro, everybody is being hormonal mm. all the time. Everything that we do is decided by our hormones. Mm. So that's like a scientifically inaccurate thing to say, "Are you being hormonal?" 